Could we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Madam Clerk, could you call the roll? McCormick is present. Uh, we have a, um, a presentation uh, for a special commendation presented to the Inwood Public Library on the occasion of its 50th anniversary as a city library and a federal and state depository. Whereas a municipal library with professional staff was authorized by the Inwood City Council 50 years ago to provide a people's university at the heart of the city, and whereas the Inwood Public Library has become a depository 50 years ago through the e efforts of U.S. Representative Charles Wilson, and whereas our public library serves as a federal and California state depository to the 43rd con Congressional District providing free and transparent access to millions of government documents for all the residents, businesses, and organizations, and whereas the Inwood Public Library delivers the world of knowledge in person, by telephone, and online, as well as provides access to computers, books, media, databases, free programming, and local history for those who might otherwise be denied these tools to utilize the full potential and cultures of our community. And whereas the librarians and staff of the Inwood Public Library continue after five decades to help people of all ages and backgrounds discover and interpret the information they need to live, learn, and prosper in the 21st century, and that our library is a living monument to the civic values of cooperation and public service. Now, therefore, be it known that the mayor and council members of the city of Inglewood, California, do hereby congratulate the Inglewood Public Library and our employees on the 50th anniversary as the city library and federal state depository presented the first day of October. I want to introduce myself. I'm Francis Tract, the acting library manager, and we are having a big 50th anniversary celebration at the library this Saturday, October 5th, from 10 o'clock to 3 o'clock, and we hope that everybody here can attend. So come make it a great day for all of us, and come back to the library. Thank you. Any persons wishing to address city council on any item of today's agenda? They do so at this time. Uh, Gil Matthew, uh, District 4, Mayor and uh, City Council. 
on uh, payment of bills. I must say I'm very happy to see the outstanding debt decreasing at a satisfactory rate. <clears throat> so that for we on going in the right direction with that. And I'm glad to see that. The outstanding debt is being decreased since 2011, so it's working. So, so we're off that slippery slope yet? That pardon? We're off that slippery slope yet? Well, we threaten water. All right, all right. But we haven't fallen into the pond. All right. Okay, now uh, on DR1, I think we should reconsider the property tax transfer. Definitely should reconsider that property tax transfer. You had it immediately one time, and then you just left it alone. <clears throat> but that should be uh, increased <clears throat> to the uh, state level. Now, I'm glad to see the Success Agency Oversight is meeting tomorrow at uh, 6 p.m., and it was very insightful the way the meeting was conducted. But, however, we need some more outreach to have more residents attend, and we still need a meeting where you can get some oral presentations to inform the public exactly how it works, because it is complicated when you look at it from a distance, but it's simple once you understand AB 1484 and how flexible it is because after all you have over 400 cities in the uh, same boat. And I must say this, that we not as bad as some or bad as most because with those cities, a lot of them are in very, very serious trouble. But we not the best, but I would say we're in the hunt and it's favorable. Also, uh, see what else is on the agenda. Oh, on the, uh, on the establishing of Padim for cars or for people, I'd like to list a brief report on the, uh, you call it, uh, before we had it, where you had a car allowance. Mm -hmm. And uh, who has a car allowance? Because I think we could save something by using a motor pool. Uh, we do have cars which are idle and uh, have the person pick up the car here rather than pay a flat car allowance. Be quite a savings. And that concludes, and the good news is that uh, once this success agency is uh, completed, that's gonna be increased to the general fund because the properties are back on the tax roll and we're going to get some pass-through monies. I estimate we're going to get 1.5 million, you know, based on just what's put back on the, on the uh, rolls that goes to the county, then it's given back to the cities. So it looks good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Matthew. Good evening. Evening. Take that afternoon, council members. Once again, I'm going to address the decorum rules. That's twice I've mentioned these do not fit into that nice little ruling made by that federal judge. So you might want to deal with that uh, now rather than ending up with that little lawsuit. Because um, we, the residents, don't need any more lawsuits to pay out when theoretically the Constitution is supposed to apply in the city of Inglewood. And I know that it's been a while since that's been a norm, but we're going to pretend that we still are part of the United States. With regard to the sound insulation, I think it's rather interesting that you keep on mentioning that people should sound insulate their homes. It's their homes. If they choose not to, that is their choice, reaching your personal legacy, want to be known for goals, is not an obligation of a homeowner. And if they choose not to have insulation in their homes because they're the ones who bought it, paid for it, live in it, and have the right to sell it, that is their choice, not this council's. That's referencing a comment from last meeting. With regard to 01, oh my goodness, we have title changes, it looks like some promotions, all the while, we're telling the little folks who don't make nearly as much as the big folks that they cost us too much and they need to go away. So I'm hoping I see five men right here, not in their suits or in your suits if you want the photo up, 
showing up to mow the lawns, showing up to do the grungy work, because you're certainly making the bucks supposedly as public servants, while we tell those other public servants who do the grunge work that we can't afford them. That's pretty sad. That's not good leadership. In fact, that's about as disgusting as anything can be. I will mention also with regard to this ordinance that it is interesting that in there you have that little section three. Oh my goodness. That's like having the kid with all the chocolate smeared all over his face saying, I didn't eat any chocolate, not me. Wow, I encourage everyone to go look at it unless it, like something else, has been deleted. Uh, that's pretty sad, but that goes back to, oh, the cutesiness of the lawsuits coming down the path. This could be the beautiful city of Inglewood. Unfortunately, right now, doesn't quite look that way to me, but then I don't wear rosy colored glasses. Here we'll close public comment. Uh, item one, CSA one and H one. Move allow payment. Second. Madam City Clerk. Council members Dotson. Aye. Council and agency members, we've called the order of the agency. Yes. Okay. Um, Dotson, uh, council and agency members Dotson? Aye. Padilla? Aye. Morales? Aye. Franklin? Aye. Mayor Chairman Butts? Aye. Items, consent items two through six. Move approval. Second. Madam City Clerk? Uh, council members Dotson? Aye. Padilla? Aye. Morales? Aye. Franklin? Aye. Mayor Butts? Aye. O one. Staff report pre rep, um, presenting the salary ordinance for the fiscal year 2013-14. Motion away for the reading. Second. Madam City Clerk. Council members Dodson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Franklin. Aye. Mayor Butts. Aye. And who will introduce? I'll introduce. Oh, thank you. DR1. Uh, staff report recommending adoption of a resolution establishing the City of Inglewood's master fee schedule. Move items one and two. Second. Madam City Clerk. Council members Dotson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Franklin. Aye. Mayor Butts. Aye. Uh, convene the Inglewood Housing Authority. Uh, Madam City Clerk. A quorum is present. H2. Uh, monthly treasures report for the month ending July 31st, 2013. Receive and file. Adjourn the Inglewood Housing Authority, convene the Ingl City of Inglewood as a successor agency. Madam a Clerk. A quorum is present. CSA 2. Monthly treasures report for the month ending July 31st, 2013. Receive and file. Adjourn the uh, successor agency, convene the Inglewood Public Financial Authority. Madam a quorum City is Clerk. present. F1. A monthly treasures report for the month ending July 31st, 2013. Receive and file. Adjourn the Public Finance Authority, convene the City Council. A quorum is present. CM1. No City Manager reports. A1. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, members of the Council. Uh, starting with CS2, there was a closed session held as to CS2, closed session, confidential attorney client privilege, potential litigation under Government Code Section 54956.9B1 claim of Kane, Balmer, and Berkman. Request a motion to authorize payment of billings. So moved. So moved. Second. <coughs> Madam City Clerk. Council members Dotson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Franklin. Aye. Mayor Butts. Aye. There was a closed session held as to CS3, closed session, confidential attorney client privilege, pending litigation under government code section 54956. Point nine, subsection A, workers' compensation claim of Guy Alford. Request a motion to authorize settlement. So moved. Second. Madam Clerk. Uh, council members Dotson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Franklin. Aye. Mayor Butts. Aye. There was a closed session held as to CS4, closed session, confidential, attorney client privilege, pending litigation under government code section 549. 56.9 subsection A, <coughs> workers' compensation claim of Robert Moose. Request a motion to authorize settlement. So moved. Second. Madam Clerk. Council members Dodson. Aye. Padilla. Aye. Morales. Aye. Franklin. Aye. 
Mayor Butts. Aye. As to CS1, the, the closed session has not been completed, so at some time during this meeting, we will recess and go back in the closed session. Okay. A2. No verbal report. CC1. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I just wanted to um, congratulate Councilman Padilla for his um, picnic on Sunday. It was an awesome success. We had an opportunity to attend. And Mayor, you had gotten out early. I heard the story. <laughs> but it was a great success. We, we've also attended Dr. Braun, um, the superintendent, on Friday reception. night. That was a reception, which was done by Carlos McGee. And that was a great success as well. And that's the end of my closing remarks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, CT1. Monthly, monthly treasures report for the month ending July 31st, 2013. Receive and file. Now, Madam Treasurer, at CT2, I, I want to tell you that you risk, for the first time, being full 20% of the council meeting <laughs> in your remarks. So be careful. <laughs> All right. I'd just like to give a brief uh, treasury report for the month of July. <coughs> and the funds under management for the city of Inglewood is $99,928,407. And the debt service interest earned is $25. And the, uh, and the interest other is $51,375. For the successor agency, the funds under management is $107,013,705. And the debt service interest earned $11,225. And the other interest is $17. Housing Authority, $100,438. $100, and the interest earning $61. Public Finance Authority, $14,864,635. And the debt service interest has been generated $1,664. And the total funds under management is $221,907,185. And I have reports on the outside table for the, uh, uh, those that's attending to pick up and follow along. It has great graphs and, and a lot of d detailed information regarding the, uh, the uh, portfolio for the, for the uh, city of Inglewood. And also would like to point out that the, uh, <coughs> there were no offerings, bond offerings, for the one year at all. For the two year, the offerings was 0.375 to about uh, 2.125. And in a three-year, 0.85 to 1.35. So the interest rates continue to be quite low. And even in the five-year, the offerings was 1.875 to about 2.08. And I uh, also would like to point out also that someone did call regarding the information I gave last week regarding the mortgage underwater. And that process is called streamline. And even though your bank may not particularly carrier, you can check around with other banks that do offer the program. But again, it has to be a VA mortgage, Veteran Affairs, or it has to be an FHA mortgage, Federal Housing Administration, and also the payments have to be, have to be current. But again, for mortgages that, that are underwater, that, that is, that process is, is available. And lastly, I would like to re-remind the public regarding the City Treasury Student Intern Program that will be starting on October the 17th from 3.30 to 6 o'clock. And I have flyers and applications that have been put out at, at the library. I have some on the counter outside. And also there at the, um, uh, the counter on the first floor. So we'll be you know, teaching uh, the students things about the overview of the city government for the mayor and city council, the city treasurer, city clerk's office. And we'll be discussing the city charter and we be explaining what resolutions are, city resolutions and their purpose and city ordinance and their purpose. And we'll have also three department uh, tours. And just a special thanks to the uh, city clerk who's offered to, uh, to provide some financial contributions. Really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Food, okay, that'll work. <laughs> and we'll also be discussing the city treasurer's responsibilities and the program also. Again, and very important investment terminology of bonds, what interest is, what mutual funds are, uh, what maturity date means, what principal means, liquidity, yield, credit risk. So a lot of information that students simply do not get in the typical uh, uh, middle and high schools. And uh, also we'll learn how money grows, interest rate, the rule of 72. I bet there's some folks here now don't know what the rule of 72 might be. 
how many knows what Rule 72 is? That tells you how fast and often money, money grows. Uh, the importance of consistent saving, how to read the daily market page in a newspaper, importance of avoiding high credit card <coughs> debt, and importance of having a good credit rating. We'll talk about FICA scores and, and other credit scores and the importance of those. And also vehicles that needed to protect your assets. And that, again, the program starts on the 17th. And also, I want to just give a special thanks to uh, Councilman Padilla. I wore my badge proudly, you know, at one of the last um, lockups. <laughs> that was so nice. And when I walked up, you know, they knew who I was. So really appreciate that. Uh, that bit, you know, so, and, and also the public appreciate it, you know, when we come up, they know who we are. So, so I certainly <laughs> want to thank you for that. And, uh, and also want to mention, I did attend the um, event that was at Crozier last, last week, and I forgot to mention that. So that was a very good event. That concludes my remarks. Thank you, Madam Treasurer. And so, we're at appointments to boards and commissions. Councilman Alec Padilla nominates and I appoint Laura Mendez to the Human Affairs Commission. Second. Madam City Clerk. Okay. Just Madam City Clerk call the roll on the uh, appointment. A quorum. Oh, okay. <laughs> a quorum is uh, call the roll. We're already in office. I mean I call for the vote. Okay. The vote. Council members. Got you. I'm sorry. Aye. About that. That's okay. <laughs> Padilla? Aye. Morales? Aye. 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 Um, any persons wishing to address city council on any matter connected with city business not elsewhere considered on the agenda may do so at this time. Don't everybody come at once. <laughs> yes, Sir. Mayor Bison to the city council. My name is Winfrey Bellman. Um, uh, residents of uh, Inglewood City. Um, I'm here to speak on the installation of windows uh, for my residents. I've been here for nine years. On February uh, 2011, they sent me a letter saying that if my garage was not modified to their specification, then I would be thrown out. I did do that what the city had asked me to do to my expense. I asked the question, why should I pay twice? The city didn't, not, didn't stop it from being sold to me, but they sold it to me as it was. So I accepted that, and then I did that as they asked. I paid the money to modify it and get rig it up. I did the inspection with um, building and safety. They approved it, and that's been two years and seven months, and I've made several attempts to talk to somebody and nothing has happened. This is and your Mayor, lucky I'm just asking, day. This, I'm is sorry. Your, this is your lucky day. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, so I'm just asking, what, what do we go from here? Mr. Sparza, I think he's out in the lobby probably. Ooh. And Mr. David Sparza, he's the assistant city manager in charge of sound insulation program. So if you just step out and talk to him, I'm sure he'll give you information of you know how we'll get to you. Okay. All right. I, um, someone's going to point him out. I don't know who he is. Absolutely. Just just wait right out there in the oh. lobby. And, oh. Thank um, you. Thank you. Just, Thank you. Would you call David? Uh, excuse me, Mr. Mayor. I did talk to. Uh, oh, come back faster. I did talk to uh, someone in sound installation this morning, uh, and she told me that she'd be contacting you today, uh, Ms. Griffin, Betty Griffin. So I already talked to her this morning on your behalf. Thank you. And she's supposed to be calling you today. If she has not, then she has not. Is. Well, he's here. How's he going to call him? <laughs> no, okay. Well, I left at 10 minutes to 2. <laughs> Up until 10 minutes to 2, she had not. Okay, well, Pastor well, Bell, we, we will, why don't you wait right outside? We'll yes, sir. Mr. Sparza, maybe take you down to Ms. Griffiths right now. And it's good to see men giving leadership in these last and evil days. All right. They know you rule the world. Very timely. Good afternoon, Leroy Fisher of the First District. You know, I was uh, looking uh, in the Morningside Chronicle uh, today, as a matter of fact, and I saw uh, that uh, a church had bought the Fifth Avenue uh, theater, it once was. A uh, building that stood there for many, many years, uh, vacant, and. Uh, uh, it's time that something be done with it. However, uh, 
the residents of the first district are going to be impacted greatly by that. I think that uh, number one, this should have been uh, bought up and let the residents know that the property was going to be sold uh, to the church and uh, it's going to impact them. So first off, I would suggest to you all that you first make uh, resident parking in those areas around the uh, church that uh, is not going to impact the residents of the first district because there is no place over there to park and and I don't know what uh, could have been in the minds of people to buy such a property and propose to put a church there uh, with no parking. I went a couple weeks ago to a uh, community meeting of the Century Heights uh, people. It seemed like they had a, a very nice meeting of, uh, of the residents in that area. Uh, many of the people were there, uh, people from uh, uh, Hollywood Park. The question was asked by a resident there, what would they propose to do building some 2,600 residents and apartments with uh, the uh, educational system. It was said that uh, the four acres that had been pro proposed to give to the city uh, for a community building or whatever we chose to do with it, uh, the city had proposed now because they could not afford to do anything with it to give it to the school district that is basically broke. So I thought that was rather interesting and something that the community should know. And finally, uh, you know, these people have been meeting and meeting with regard to a senior center, uh, and now all of a sudden we find that the property for the senior center is up for sale. It's a shame, I guess, for those people who have been meeting for this time to uh, find out that there is not going to be a, a, a senior center there. I uh, was uh, at a convention of the Wiseman this past uh, weekend, uh, found out that they were going to build a, a YMCA in Koreatown. Uh, we uh, should have had an opportunity to have a YMCA here, and maybe we wouldn't be putting our kids to play ping pong in a library. Thank you. Ms. Matthew, before you get started, Mr. Fisher, the, the site at Locust and Queen is not up for sale. All right, go ahead. Uh, Gil Matthew, the senior uh, center site I'm talking about. Go ahead. Uh, Gil Matthew, District 4, Mayor and uh, City Council. Uh, seemed like the landing pattern has changed for uh, the airport. And many residents who are not eligible for the sound installation are being impacted. <clears throat> and I was hoped that you could refer this for study to the Aviation Committee <clears throat> because there seems to be some problem that needs to be worked out between the Part 150 and the Part 161 changes that's made. Some people are being left out, <clears throat> and they're impacted very much now, particularly between uh, it's uh, Manchester going to 76th Street, <clears throat> going uh, between uh, Crenshaw and uh, Van Ness. Anyway, uh, also, <clears throat> also, <clears throat> We need to start doing some studies on having a YMCA here and something for the young people. And uh, it should be gone to whatever commission they can go to for study. <clears throat> also, uh, with the situation here for ADA, <clears throat> I was hoping that the chairs could be lifted. You know, there's a bar under the chair, some way they could uh, lift the chair just to height, make it much easier for people like me to get up from a low point. But I mean, it should be able to do, if you notice underneath, and mm -hmm. maybe adjust. <clears throat> now, uh, also, there should be a lace on between the city and the schools. You know, the schools are still in receivership. And uh, as the city goes, so will the schools. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we should be concerned about that, where we at least have a lace on, try to assist them as much as it can to get out of the receivership. Now, there's going to be some pass-through money to the schools, just as going to be some pass-through money to the city. So that's, that's a fact. That's a good thing about the uh, winding down of the redevelopment agency. And uh, you're going to find out the general fund is going to get a little money, 
And, and as I said, we estimated between $1.52 million just on property tax revenue. And also, uh, in conclusion, that uh, you might reconsider this 2 p.m. meeting because many people are confused about the first and third, and in fact, the residents are working. And we're trying to really involve the younger families in the city of Inglewood and let them know what's available. Because uh, even though the federal government is shut down, it's not going to be forever. It happened before in 95. It was for 21 days, so it's just political grandstanding was happening now. <clears throat> but it will be resolved. <clears throat> so here again, it's just a matter of delegating some things to the various commissions and uh, let's try to get the city together, and so particularly for the senior center. Now, it's a long shot, but I think we should reconsider the housing based on that senior center because we do have to have replacement housing. <clears throat> so we may consider the senior center some kind of way and keep the housing in there. That was a beautiful program that they had developed. However, you know, money that ran out or whatever. But that was one of the best construction plans I've ever seen developed in the city of Inglewood. Thank you very much for your constructive uh, comments, Mr. Matthew. Good afternoon, City Council, Mayor, staff, and residents. Uh, last week, I inquired about the uh, sound insulation um, for the residents have, who have apparently been locked out because mm -hmm. if you make a complaint about the contract that you took up with FAA, that you'd have to give back all the money that they gave to City of Inglewood. But, and I told you I was not a very happy resident, I don't care about my home, but there's many, many homes that need to have that sound insulation because of the air traffic going over our homes True. and the pollution that mm -hmm. they're leaving behind. Um, I agree with everything that Mr. Fisher said, and especially regarding the YMCA, you seem to have money to do everything for, um, future residents, building, apartment buildings and all that. Why can't you put a YMCA here? Uh, I don't think the library um, suffices for what our youth need. And um, uh, I want to piggyback on everything that uh, Mr. Gil Matthews had to say. For myself, I wanted to also comment on the letter that the city clerk read last meeting from one of the so-called citizens of Inglewood um, berating those of us who come up and try to speak truth to power. It's evident that she does not attend meetings because she said in the letter that uh, on television it just looks horrible. You know? <coughs> we are the naysayers, as some in the audience would call us. We're not naysayers. We are trying to speak truth to you. We are trying to let you know what the majority of the residents want, not those who are maybe favored in this community, like the churches and uh, other residents who sing your praises. I'll sing your praises when it's, <laughs> when I have to, but I won't if it's not, if I'm not being um, considered and my and my wishes are not being considered I'm not going to sing your praises ever and so um, streets I see that uh, some works are being done in the streets but uh, the residential streets they really need work they really need work and post haste as a matter of fact most of our most of our services that have been taken away from us need to be re-implemented post haste. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'll go ahead and 
give you my name again. It's Diane Sombrano, who Mr. A.G. always calls every name he can think of. And of course, I want to thank Willie Brown to acknowledge me in the newspaper. He somehow thinks that it's a virtue to sing your own praises. Oh, how sad. It is not. If you actually go back and look through the annals of time, <coughs> biblical studies, etc., praising oneself is not a positive. So I thank you for acknowledging that I choose not to do so. Um, now, I came over here coming up Yukon, and I got to tell you, we work so hard at tearing down good stuff, it's amazing. Did you notice all the broadleaf canopy trees are now gone? Yeah, and then I knew better, but I did it anyway. I came down La Brea. Silly, silly me. Because now I have the opportunity to let you know that guess what? The palm trees where you chose to put them, the palm trees that I told you about previously are water suckers, probably not a good thing in a community of drought. You know, Los Angeles still has those, you can water X through X, but not on such and such a day and the other day. That's because of water. And we put water suckers up and down La Brea on the sides. And now the businesses will not be able to use their windows to display their wares unless they have incredible window coverings. Because in the morning, one side will be bleached by the sun. In the afternoon, the other side will be bleached by its sun. Wow. How long is it going to take for you to figure that one out? Because remember, I'm the one who told you about the train tracks and it cost you $250,000 extra dollars because everybody called me a naysayer and not wanting to go with progress. I just kind of wanted you to save some money up front knowing that the train tracks were there. That's when you did the Market Street. How much was the change order for the other part? Because you see, some of us actually really genuinely, honest to goodness, care about this community. We work in it a lot of days a week, volunteering. We don't take home the 5,000 and 9,000 a month that you guys do because we do it out of love for our community. So now let me introduce Mr. A.G., the man with the rosy colored glasses who will tell everybody what a rotten person I am because that's what he enjoys doing. Wow. My name is Willie A.G., and I live in the beautiful city of Inglewood with beautiful people. I want to tell you guys, Diane is a friend of mine. I don't know why she want to talk so bad about me. All I said, she called her naysayer. She called me much worse things than that. Anyway, you know, I've heard so much talk about the YMCA hidden city. We had a Y here. They sold it, I guess, and they were going to build a YMCA on the southwest corner of Century and Prairie. But they wanted the city to take the property, buy the property, and give them, if I remember correctly, eight, something like $80,000 to build a YMCA, but they didn't want the city to have anything to do with it. So <coughs> it, had they invested money in it themselves, it would be there today. But they wanted the city to bat it, Bird. That's one of the reasons why we probably in the shape that we're in. But anyway, uh, I want to thank Councilman Alex Padilla for a beautiful picnic at North Park uh, on Sunday. It was awesome, I tell you. I, it's to see the kids just running around, enjoying themselves, enjoying the playground equipment and stuff is just awesome. Uh, I want to say this. District 2 is alive again. District 1 is alive again. I, you know, I can't thank you people enough. It's, 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 it, it is a great, great day in the city of Inglewood. Uh, and I'm going to put my hand on it. 
I'm going to tell you who made it happen. A guy by the name of Jim T. Butts, Jr. That's the man that pulled it off. And I want to thank you. Keep up the good work. Beautiful city of England. Oh, I forgot to say, did find the Morningside Chronicle on my front porch. And I want to thank the gentleman because I had just ran out of toilet paper. <laughs> thank you. We'll close public comment. Um, Councilman uh, Watson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, a couple of things. First of all, I want to thank Councilman Padilla for in inviting me to that wonderful picnic. Uh, I enjoyed myself and met a lot of people in the second district. That was great. Uh, I want to thank uh, Lewis Atwell and Public Works for being so prompt and taking down the tree on Fifth Avenue and, uh, and Hardy that it fell in the front yard. I'm sure they appreciate the, the effort. I went by to see, I called that morning, it was gone by 11 o'clock that same day. And I, when I say gone, I mean gone. You didn't even know the tree had been there before. So thanks to, to Public Works uh, for doing such a great job. The other thing is I want you to save the date, November the 2nd. I'll be holding my first town hall meeting. It will be from 11 to 1. And it will be held at the First Church of God. And there'll be some refreshments. And you can come and uh, uh, hear your mayor and see some of the department heads there. They will be there to answer your question and give you information on what's going on in, in the city of Inglewood and specifically the First District. I thank you all for coming out. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you, Councilman Padilla. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, first off, I've, uh, a few of you have uh, talked about our picnic we had on Sunday. And I want to thank the mayor, the council members, and city staff that came out to show their support. But I really want to thank the community, the residents and the business owners that were out there uh, to make this event such a success. And it's not because of anything that I've done. Quite frankly, it's a community that we have that is pulled together, that have been doing so many great things for, for the city of Inglewood. Uh, I also want to thank my Parks Commissioner Juanita Withrow for her energy, her uh, compassion, and her passion for putting this event together, making sure that everyone had a good time. Uh, there was plenty of food to eat, uh, refreshments, uh, events for the kids. Uh, so I want to thank everyone for coming out. But again, it's not anything I've done. It's the community. I want to thank all of you out there for making not only District 2 a place to be, but making Inglewood the place to be. I want to remind folks that uh, we are having our town hall meeting on Saturday, October the 19th, here in Community Room A on the first floor from 10 to 12. Also a reminder, I know we presented the, and I want to congratulate the library for their 50 year anniversary, but also that uh, this Saturday morning we're having our uh, citywide a uh, yard sale over at uh, uh, Hollywood Park in the parking lot there, so I hope to see you out there. Uh, I want to thank Dr. Carlos McGee for putting together such a wonderful event to recognize Dr. Brand from uh, the schools, the state appointed uh, uh, trustee uh, for uh, that event, which was held here in the community room last Friday evening. I want to thank city staff for, again, putting together another successful uh, event in downtown Inglewood. Uh, plenty of, uh, of our community members and, and, and residents from throughout the area that came down to enjoy a Friday night here in the beautiful city of Inglewood. Uh, and a reminder, something for your calendars, uh, Sentinella Hospital is hosting their health fair on Saturday, October the 12th from 1 to 5 at their facility at 555 East Hardy. So if you just put that on your uh, calendar. Again, I want to thank everybody for coming out and showing their support, and have a good week. Thank you, Councilman Morales. Thank you. Uh, just a couple brief statements. Uh, I'd like to thank staff for doing such a great job, along with KJLH, the 
the food truck event has become um, kind of a really nice part of a Friday afternoon and evening. I mean, it's amazing just how relaxed the atmosphere is and how uh, folks are just not worried about about anything other than having a good time. And, and that's the kind of image that we need to start portraying. So uh, the more events like that we have, the better. Um, that one's going to be here for a long time because it's quite successful. After that, we all, a few of us came down to uh, Superintendent Don Brand's uh, little uh, reception here downstairs in Community Room A. And I have to say, you know, uh, a lot is spoken about our school system. Uh, but the truth is we have a, a person who has the ability to move the, the school district forward. I think as a community, if we all get behind them and really push uh, to make this a school district what it needs to be, you know, we'll get there. You know, he's the one that has the hill to climb, but uh, we can help him with that. Uh, in regards to um, uh, the library event on Saturday, I think it's great. Obviously. Uh, most of you know I worked my way through school at the library and it, it, it's something that I'll always remember but it serves such a great place in the community uh, it, more than just going there and doing your homework trust me folks pick up their kids there it serves almost as daycare which is sometimes uh, very difficult for the library but it's a place where a community just kind of uh, unites themselves so um, and then I want to close the meeting in honor of uh, Eric Jones, Mayor. Um, I was actually looking through the uh, obituary on Sunday by coincidence, and, and I went to elementary school with his older brother. So this is a young man, age 40. Um, I have actually been trying to contact the family. Uh, they are uh, just a great example of what an Inglewood, Inglewood family was. I know they were residents of the uh, second district for 30 plus years and it was three boys and a girl and they all uh, grew up to um, get a you know some of them went to, to Ivy League schools and, and and did great things with their lives so I know the family is is going through a tough time and I just want to send my condolences to them so that's all mayor thank you thank you councilman Franklin yes thank you mayor um, first of all let me <coughs> reach out and thank the chief uh, Mark Bartharada on coordinating with the businesses in District 4, particularly the intersection of Imperial and Crenshaw, where the three shopping centers, we had a business-to-business -business meeting and addressing specific issues involving the three shopping centers and how we could joint uh, partner together to make it a, a quality experience, positive experience for the not only the customers but the employees as well. I also want to thank the a number of block clubs that have had their many meetings throughout the summer and just recently this past weekend and the community gatherings which we just had last night regarding quality of life issues. You're having these meetings because there is an issue of concern that you raise but you're coming up with positive suggestions and we're collectively working on positive solutions and I want to thank them. And finally I just want to thank those that know my uh, current personal family matters that I'm dealing with. Uh, we've had some serious struggles for the last several weeks, and I just want everyone to know prayer changes things, and we are on the rebound. And God be the glory. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and Ms. Sly, I wanted to tell you that we have not forgotten about the people that are not within the contours, and we're going to do what we can to see if we can provide some equity as it relates to houses that are in, at the end of the block. We, of course, must finish the houses that are in the contours, but um, they are not forgotten. I want you to know that. And I, I think it's um, a symbol of the progress that we've made that um, instead of uh, people complaining that we won't be able to get to the houses that need to be done, but complaining that we're over encouraging people to get their sound houses insulated, that's a less progress because that's uh, a complaint we'll take. Um, Councilman Padilla had a great event, but his, his community had a great event at North Park. And uh, I'm just so pleased that before I'd see just the council person and, and maybe the, the, the city clerk or the treasurer and, and the, the um, board of chair of the of board of equalization, but now I see <coughs> council people from all over the city at all these block parties, and it is a wonderful thing. It's a great sense of community. I also wanted to mention the Hispanic celebration that we had 
at uh, Crozier Saturday before last. It was a wonderful event. Again, broad participation and, and uh, Council Morales, it was a great event. I, I want to acknowledge that I believe that we have the, the greatest treasurer in the country because really all a treasurer has to do to get reelected is not lose the money she invests, but she does so much more than that. She spends so much of her time reaching out to children and, and we talk about, you know, um, services for children and the fact that we lack a YMCA, but she all this time through all this turmoil, she's been steadfast for the children in this community and I, and I really want to acknowledge you publicly for that. Um, it was a great event for Dr. Braun. We, we are solid in our support for the district. Uh, we, ha we have intergovernmental meetings to see ways that we can have synergy and help. I also want to acknowledge, in, in addition to Dr. Braun, uh, Latanya Kirk Carter, who was the interim interim when the first interim went away, and she didn't just sit on her hands and say, I'm waiting for someone else to come. She worked hard for our kids, and, and I want to publicly acknowledge her. I'm going to close the meeting in the name of uh, Eric Jones. And we are recessing the meeting to return to closed session. We'll report out when we finish. Thank you. <clears throat>